So today what I'd like to do is be able to get out my week two picks. Week one didn't go too terribly. I got 75% correctly. My actual picks in terms of, of weighted whatever on the CBS pool, which you can still get involved in. There should be a link in the description somewhere um, if you want to get involved in that. But uh, that didn't go all that well because the games I did lose, I put a lot of points on, like the Eagles and stupid stuff like that. But... Um, not a bad start. 75% is a pretty solid average if we can keep that rolling, which I doubt. But let's look at week two. It's getting a little bit weirder. We got some some tough games to look at. Um, Going to be a little bit more long shots and whatnot, but uh, let's take a swing at it. So I want to start off with, obviously, Thursday's game, Cincinnati at Cleveland. I think the this game, first of all, is pretty close in my mind. The biggest thing, and I'm going to reserve the right to change this, um, as more information comes out. As of right now, you have, for example, Mac Wilson, Greedy Williams, Jacob Phillips, Kevin Johnson for the Cleveland Browns are officially out. Um, but there's questions about Jack Conklin, who is questionable. Um, it says he's questionable for Thursday's game against Cincinnati with an ankle or finger injuries, or both or whatever, I don't know. We've also got Olivier Vernon with an abdomen issue, less listed as questionable. Jarvis Landry is questionable with a hip injury. Chris Hubbard is questionable. J.C. Treader is questionable. And Jedrick Wills is also questionable. So if these guys don't play, all bets are off. Um, we're talking about your starting, both starting tackles, one of your backup tackles, your starting center, um, arguably your best wide receiver at this point with Odell just completely n being a non-factor, and Olivier Vernon. However, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking at a team that in the Cincinnati Bengals that could barely take advantage of a terrible Chargers offensive line. So even if the Browns have devastating injuries along the offensive line, I don't know that that means the Bengals win, especially now that you figure Mike Daniels is officially out um, on top of not having Geno Atkins. You've got Joe Burrow that looked like a hot mess while he was being hunted by the Chargers pass rushers. Now he's got Miles Garrett coming after him. I mean, it, look, it's it's close, and I can absolutely see a path to victory. Joe Burrow's got to tighten it up a little bit. Got to be able to get after the Cleveland Browns. I mean, they're, they're kind of a mess, so if you can disrupt them, they'll, they'll make some mistakes, just take advantage of it. Um, you got the weapons on the outside. You've got a running back. It's not impossible, but I just think, as of right now, the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, or excuse me, the Cleveland Browns are more likely to win this game. And, and let's not forget, they lost to the Baltimore Ravens, right? So it's... Let's cut them a little slack here. We'll, we'll see as the season goes on how bad this is in Cleveland. It looked bad, but I'm taking Cleveland right now. Next up, we've got the Denver Broncos at the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it seems pretty unanimous in favor of Pittsburgh. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm not 100% in that direction. First of all, let's look at the uh, injuries here. Zach Banner for the Pittsburgh Steelers was put on IR. A.J. Boye for Denver was put on IR, clearly much more impactful. You've also got Garrett Bowles, questionable, Trey Marshall, Ty Tyree Cleveland, Philip Lindsay, Cortland Sutton, Mark Barron um, for the Steelers, Stephon Tewitt, uh, Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster, James Conner, Alejandro Villanueva, uh, David DeCastro, Stefan Wisniewski. Again, depending on which way these things fall could change things, but but here's here's the general thought that I have on this. First of all, I was not as impressed with Pittsburgh's offense as I would like to have been. We already know Pittsburgh's defense is freakish, and they abused the Giants' uh, offensive line, a revamped offensive line that you expect a lot more from. They just made made a joke of it. Uh, they weren't able to run the ball. They couldn't do anything, but, but we already knew that. The difference between the Denver Broncos' defense that held the Tennessee Titans to, what, 16 points, and the New York Giants defense, which I think might be one of the worst in the NFL, clearly one of the worst cornerback groups in the NFL, it's massive. So if the Pittsburgh Steelers offense doesn't get going a little bit better than that, they're in a lot of trouble. Now, what is Denver's offense going to be able to do against Pittsburgh? Well, as much as I'm not a believer in Drew Locke, and I'm not, despite Denver fans saying that he's the guy 100%, he's definitely going to tear it up, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of my issue, and that's the reason I am leaning Steelers. Um, but let me put it this way. I think the line is, is minus seven and a half for the Steelers. I would go against that. I, I don't, I, if nothing else, I think Denver is going to do a good job of keeping the score low. Now that's not to say the Steelers offense can't start picking it up and maybe I'm being unfair in the way I'm picking on them. I only watched the first half of that game, but I just saw a lot of just garbage, just like, what are you doing? Bad throws and, and can't catch. And it's like, you should be annihilating the Giants. This defense is garbage. The, uh, what's, what's the pass rusher's name? Carter? 
Carter was was able to get to the to the quarterback. I think 13, 14 percent of the time, which is a ridiculously high number. That's a really good pass rush rate. His normal pass rush rate last year, I think, was like eight or nine percent, which is putrid because he's not a good pass rusher. He's not a good football player. Blake Martinez, you guys made look like an all pro. It was not impressive. And Vic Fangio's defense, even without Von Miller, is going to be a much harder test. So you've got to step it up a little bit. So I think Denver's actually going to give, give them a run for their money. I think there's a potential. You know, they've got a run game. They've got some serious wide receiver weapons. Um, uh, Jerry Judy had a bunch of drops and a fumble. But if he can kind of tighten that up, I mean, his ability to kind of rip some things up, I, I just think Denver not only could win. I Well, they, they could possibly win. I don't think they will. But I think there could be a real big scare. I think Denver may have a lead at some point, and, and you know, eventually the Steelers' defense will kind of tighten up. And um, I keep saying tighten up, and Titans fans are probably getting all excited about it. I'm not talking about the Titans, obviously. But I don't know. I'm, I'm picking the Steelers. I would not pick the Steelers for 7.5. I'm not doing that. The next game I want to look at is Rams at Eagles. If you'd have asked me a week ago who wins this game week two, Rams or Eagles, I would have said Eagles. I don't know about hands down, but I just feel like the Eagles are, are clearly the better roster. Um, the Rams just, you know, they, they seem like they're going downward, right? It just, it, it's not the same as it was last year, as it was the year before that, as it was the year before that. It's, it's not headed in the right direction. Obviously, their cap management is a joke, which doesn't speak very well for being able to build up a roster. And so you see general decline. So it kind of made sense, right? They're declining. Eagles have figured out. Better roster, no problem. That isn't the same attitude I have today. That performance against Washington was pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. I don't know what the problem is with the Eagles. I really don't have any idea what, what you guys are doing. Um, the the amount of pressures and sacks that were given up in that game, and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing excuses that I really just don't want to hear. From what I can tell, seven sacks, 24 pressures. I legitimately, now what PFF does, it's, it actually said 10 sacks, 34 pressures pressures but that was from the Washington side and the reason it does that is they don't do half sacks which I think makes sense doesn't matter I saw 10 and 34 and I thought oh that must be 2019 last year's total sacks for the season or something because there's no way they got 10 sacks and 34 pressures there's there's two levels of excuses the you know Washington has a really good defensive line which I'm hearing a lot of the national pundits say which I think is garbage um and that uh the the Eagles had a banged up offensive line also garbage first of all um, Peters, Kelsey, Wentz, Suamalo, Driscoll, Herbig, and Scott were all responsible for the sacks. Peters and Kelsey and your quarterback. So don't give me that nonsense about, well, it was just like that one guy over there that's a sieve. No, no, no. It was everybody. Everybody sucked. Oh, well, it's because they got that new one, that one new guy. No, no, no. Young, Ioannidis, Kerrigan, Payne, Sweat, Allen, and Bostic all came up with sacks in this game. Don't give me that nonsense. You got guys that are not very good coming up with sacks in this game. It's ridiculous. Payne, two sacks all last year. Two. So don't give me that. This was garbage. This is pathetic. Maybe you know and you're just you're you're as upset. I mean, you're Philly fans. You should be as furious. I'm sure you hate me and them because um, just hate is what you guys are really good at. But that's not, I mean, that's, 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 what, what am I supposed to do? You can't beat Washington, and I'm going to pick you against the Rams. I can't pick you against anybody. I thought Washington was the worst team in football. I mean, you got the Jets and maybe the Giants and a couple teams that maybe are kind of in there, Jaguars-y things. But I, I would have said Washington for sure. And now they're 1-0 and because they just wrecked your world. That's ridiculous. I mean, they didn't do anything. Haskins is still graded as one of the worst quarterbacks in football, just like he was last year. So that excuse, well, he took a step. No, he did not. He didn't do anything. Nobody on this team did anything except their their new pass rusher. So I don't I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say other than you are the better team. The Eagles are the better team over the Rams, but the Rams right now, the Eagles are falling apart. The Rams got some swagger, right? They got their offensive line back. They're looking good. They kind of look like the old Rams again. Obviously, Aaron Donald's going to wreck your world. It shouldn't be enough to beat you. I think your your defense is on point. I see Brandon Graham and Alshon Jeffrey and, and Peters and Hargrave are all injured and questionable, but it, it doesn't matter. If they don't play, I still think you have more talent on your roster. If they do play, you definitely have more talent on your roster. I think you have a far better defense than they do. I think you've got more weapons. You've got the quarterback, the wide receivers, the tight ends, the offensive line. Top to bottom, this team is just stacked. Doesn't matter because you guys don't know what to do with it anymore. I don't know if Wentz got figured out, your head coach got figured out. Something happened. 
and it's all falling apart. And you got to figure out what it is, but I don't think it's going to happen against the Rams. I think the better team loses, and I think the better team's going to lose a lot of games this year, and I don't know why. And if there's any Eagles fans that want to give me some insights as to why in the world you guys are playing so poorly, not just week one. Well, you're overreacting to week one. No, 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 no. Good teams won in week one. Bad teams lost in week one. That's why I got 75% right last week, because you just picked the better team, and guess what? Most of the better teams won, with the exception of the Eagles. Not to mention last year, same situation. So I'm just asking why. I'm not asking if. It is happening. I just don't know why. Best of luck to you. The next game I want to look at is Jaguars at Titans. Um, let me just say this. I'm happy for the Jaguars. I've been saying for a very long time now, if you've been watching my mock drafts, that they've been underappreciated. They've been given the number one pick overall for a very long time, and I've been saying they don't deserve that. They're not going to get the number one overall pick. That's nonsense. And even Jaguars fans are like, they're not getting number one. And I'm saying in the comments, I know. I'm just going off of what everybody's saying. Worst odds, blah, blah, blah. And even I'm working on a new mock, and they have them second now. Whatever. Vegas and the rest of these guys just won't quit hating on the Jaguars. However, I don't know how you guys beat the Colts, man. I... <laughs> I really have no idea. You didn't do anything. I'm, I'm just... I, first of all, the Titans' injuries do need to be monitored. Jadavian Clowney, Corey Davis, A.J. Brown, Kenny Vaccaro, and Vic Beasley. They don't seem to be serious injuries, but, again, depending on which way that falls, that changes that dynamic of things. Uh, sounds like everybody's relatively okay with the exception of Corey Davis, who didn't practice. But anyways, outside of that, I'm looking at a Jaguar. See, first of all, the Colts, I don't think, punted once. Aaron Rodgers was on record last week saying, well, we only punted once, and you know if you only punt once in a game, you're you're going to have a really good game. You, you, the Colts punted zero times and lost this game. And so I, I looked at it, I'm like, okay, what did the Jaguars do to win? And I'm like, well, I know Minshew supposedly played well. What, what, what happened there? The leading Jaguars receiver totaled 47 yards and a touchdown. Their leading rusher is an, a rookie undrafted free agent that got 62 yards, 3.9 yards per carry. None of that is impressive. <laughs> None of that is anything interesting. I, 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 I just, I mean, I know C.J. Henderson balled out, and he looked fantastic, and he's already graded as one of the best corners, and, and one of the scores came on a, a big pick that, you know, you got great field position off of that and all that, but I just think that that, that level of luck is not going to happen. This, this looks like a Jaguars team that has ownership that is trying desperately to tank, and the Jaguars are just, they, they just got too much swagger to, to lose, man. You got Minshew, and these guys are just out there. They don't care anymore. The locker room's starting to mesh now that some of the, the guys that don't really want to be there are gone, and they just seem like they're having fun, and they're playing their best ball, but at some point, you're going to hit a wall, and, and the Colts kind of got caught with their pants down. They got a new quarterback, and a bunch of there's a whole bunch of new, right? A bunch of new everything, um, but you know, the Tennessee Titans, they had a hard time against a really good defense, Vic Fangio's defense in Denver. Um, I don't see any way. I mean, what was Taven Bryan going to stop Derrick Henry? Give me a break. There's nobody there. There's no linebackers. There's no anything that's going to stop Derrick Henry from freight training his way down. I mean, he had 3.9 yards per carry against Denver. He averages 5.1. He's going to really get going in this game. Um, you know, you got Jadavian Clowney, and you, you got all, all this stuff, A.J. Brown, and I just don't really see it. I don't see you lucking your way into this, and I don't see those guys getting any better. Your leading receiver is somebody I've never heard of before. Your, your leading running back, your starting running back, is a guy I've never heard of before, and as much as you might like Gardner Minshew, the offensive line isn't good enough. The the weapons aren't good enough. The, the I mean, running back, wide receiver, tight end, the defense is not... I'm happy for the Jaguars. I don't think you get the number one overall pick. I think you got more wins uh, under your belt. I don't see the playoff t Tennessee Titans as being another victory. I don't see going 2-0 and over the Titans. I don't see it. It's not going to be my 16 overall. My my most likely the Jaguars could possibly win. They're 1-0. and They beat the Colts. I just don't see it, man. Not this week. Beat the Titans, and we'll talk next week. Next up, Carolina Panthers at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. we got the Carolina Panthers that put up a heck of a slugfest fight against the Raiders. Um, you've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who just got beat by the Saints. So you might have some people going, I don't know. Look, man, I've, I've been kind of down on Tampa Bay um, as far as them being overrated and being, you know, like the fifth best team in football. I thought all that was kind of a joke. However... Apples to apples, man. Tampa Bay compared to Carolina, I just don't see any comparison. I mean, Tom Brady, the you know 
relatively impressive offensive line, probably the best wide receiver duel in football. I know there's a chance Evans doesn't play. Um, there's also, I mean, Godwin's also hurt, but you had Godwin didn't practice. Evans was limited in practice. I think they go, and even if they don't, you got the tight ends. I think I think Tampa, although I think their defense is massively overrated, still has a better defense than Carolina. I just don't really see a path to victory for the Carolina Panthers. Um, if they pull it off, I'm gonna I'm gonna be grinning ear to ear. But I I, I think this one's pretty straightforward, man. I, I gotta go Tampa Bay. Next up, we've got the Detroit Lions at the Green Bay Packers. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are expecting me to say the Packers by a million, but that's not at all what I'm going to say. I think a lot of this comes down to the injuries. Um, Detroit Lions currently have their right tackle, Vitae. Desmond Trufant uh, had, did not participate. So Vitae didn't practice. Trufant didn't practice. Kenny Galladay didn't practice. Daryl Roberts, who is their backup slot corner in the absence of their Coleman, their current slot corner, who just got put on IR. So they got a slot corner. He's on IR. They brought in Daryl Roberts. Now he's hurt. Um, Hunter Bryant and C.J. Moore also injured, um, along with Nick Williams and Jason Cabinda. I don't know. I don't know. Fullback. No idea. It doesn't matter. Don't care. Um, if these guys don't play Packers by a million, if they do, kind of a coin toss in my mind to be completely honest and it really just comes down to a couple other variables first of all can the Packers continue to play at a high level offensively if it wasn't a fluke and I don't expect that level every week but if that wasn't a fluke and that's just generally how this is going to go Matt LaFleur's offense with Aaron Rodgers humming and these wide receivers are, are good enough and the, the tight ends are getting involved and the running backs are looking good and just everything is clicking kind of like old school Packers right the offense just just rolls then I think the Packers are good I think everything's going to be fine um the other variable is the Packers' defense did not look good at all against the Minnesota Vikings' offense. You might not necessarily know it, but when the Vikings score, what do they score, 34 points in about 18 minutes total offense that they had, they barely touched the ball. They're scoring almost two points a minute. Um, that's that's not great. The, the Vikings more or less moved at will with the exception of a couple big plays that the defense did. You know, they had a safety, they had a pick, both by Jair. Um the Lions always play the Packers really tough. If they're healthy, if the Packers defense does does not do a good job of stopping this Lions offense, I'm getting worried. And if the Packers offense regresses, now I'm I'm thinking it's less than 50%, right? I mean, it, it's kind of what it was last year where the Lions, if you guys don't know this stat, the Packers beat the Lions twice. They led the Lions um, for exactly zero seconds last year. Both games they were losing to the lions the entire game and had game winning field I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm right about that I, i've been saying that I, in, but in my head now I'm, i got that little thing going off going like yeah that doesn't sound right that sounds wrong look it up i'm pretty sure it's true um so yeah the lions always play tough i've been saying for a while i'm more worried about the lions than the vikings so we'll see how it goes um i, I don't really want to win because kenny galladay is out and because all these guys are out i want it to be full strength Obviously, as much as I want the Packers to win a, one, a bunch of games, I want them to actually be a good team. And all these doubts of all these people getting injured, um, I'll take the wins. But you know, let's see what this let's see what this team can do. The defense has to step up. So we'll, we'll track the injuries on the Packers side. Um, Equinemia St. Brown, who is questionable, he didn't play last week. Josiah DeGuara, who looked really solid, um, I think he's okay, but he is injured. The biggest thing though is going to be Kenny Clark. In the absence of Kenny Clark, there's just nothing going on along this defensive line. The Packers' ability to stop the run is, is basically zero even with Kenny, Kenny Clark. You remove him from the equation and it gets really scary. Um, as far as I know, everybody else should be pretty well okay, but Elton Jenkins also popped up on this list. Uh, one of our better offensive linemen. He was our, our, he's in our, his second year right now. And um, he plays guard, but he also we put him at tackle last week. He's primarily what he did in college was a center. So, I mean, he's he's incredibly impressive so if he doesn't play that's another issue but right now I'm, I'm taking the Packers um, how highly I I'll, I'll take them no matter what depending on regardless of injuries I'm taking the Packers but whether it's a really high or kind of a lower thing is going to largely depend on uh, the injury situation next up we get the Minnesota Vikings and the Indianapolis Colts um, I, I think if you'd asked me a month ago I would have said this is going to be a really good game between two teams that I'm really impressed with. You ask me today, I'm going to say this is a really good game between two teams that I am not very impressed with. <laughs> um, you know, 
taking a look at what Pro Football Focus says, which doesn't do all that well in terms of grades when you're just looking at one week, but man, this Vikings defense, there are two people. If you don't know, PFF grades on a scale that starts at 60 and works its way up and down from there, 60 being exactly average. Um, two people starting on this defense graded higher than a 60. There is nobody along the defensive line that graded, or the starting defensive line that I can see that started, that got a higher grade than a 50. Um, Kendricks got a 69.9. Harrison Smith got a 70.0. 70 is basically good. So 70 and above is good. There's one guy that was in the 70s and he was exactly 70.0. Um, this the cornerback group got embarrassed. Anthony Harris got one of his lowest grades that I've ever seen him have. Very talented guy. Yannick Ngakwe was in the 40s, currently ranked as the 99th best edge rusher. Again, that'll average out. He'll get better over time. But the question for me comes down to, and you probably know a good, a good idea what my answer is, how much of this is the Packers just abusing this defense and how much of it is just Zimmer looking at this going, this is not good, man. And, and, and I, you know, I want to give the Packers credit, but I said going into that game, this is not a good defense. I'm impressed with what the Packers did. I'm happy, but this isn't good enough, man. This defensive line is not good. Um, Anthony Barr is massively overrated, always has been. Kendricks looked good in that game. Um, but now you've got Cam Dantzler is injured. So, you know, it's not that I'm trying to be biased, and I know the Colts got off to a rough start, but I'm still looking at a really good offensive line, and they all graded well last week. It's not like they got beat up by the Jaguars. This is a very, very talented offensive line, still one of the best in the NFL going up against a, a defensive line that couldn't generate any pressure against Aaron Rodgers. What are they going to do? And, and I know they had a hard time getting the, the run game going with Jonathan Taylor. He was great as a, as a receiver, which is completely contrary to conventional wisdom. But, man, if he gets rolling and you got Naheem Hines and you got T.Y. Hilton and you got Campbell, I just don't necessarily think it's going to go very well for the Vikings defense. Um, conversely, the, the Colts defense did get beat up a little bit, but I still think this is the best linebacking duo in the NFL. I think uh, Darius Leonard is, is maybe the best linebacker in all of football, which you can't say about the Green Bay Packers. So whereas Dalvin Cook kind of ran at will, you've got guys like Justin Houston, who is still really impressive in his old age. you got DeForest Buckner that came over going up against one of the worst offensive lines in football. And again, the biggest difference being, I think they're going to do a better job of stopping the run. I know, again, the Jaguars, well, the, the Jaguars didn't even do that much on the ground. Um, the biggest threat is going to be through the air, but you know, it's the same thing we saw with the Packers. How much can Cousins to Thielen really do? Even if this is the best quarterback to wide receiver, du receiver duo in football, how much is that going to carry your team if you have a terrible offensive line, you don't have any weapons outside of Thielen, your, your tight ends aren't doing anything, your defensive line isn't doing anything, you don't have any corners, you got one linebacker. You, just at some point, it's just, it's just not enough. Um, and although I could absolutely see the Vikings kind of clicking back into gear and the defense kind of gets its groove back and cousin you know cook gets moving and and you know maybe justin jefferson really has a big game he actually looked really impressive he didn't grade all that well didn't get a lot of opportunities but when he gets the ball in his hand it's kind of like you kind of jolt a little bit like oh dude this guy's scary like please tackle this guy he freaks you out he's kind of like dalvin cook right you know if you don't tackle him it's like oh he's gonna he's he's gonna run for 400 yards on this one play i don't know how he's gonna like get a touchdown run all the way back and get another touchdown he's just the speed is horrifying um but there's just there's too much talent for the Colts and just not enough for the for the Vikings. And although I could easily see the Vikings winning because they've got some top end talent on offense and defense, and the Colts got embarrassed by the Jaguars, which is ridiculous. Just the matchup just makes more sense that I think the Colts are going to win this one. I'm not overly confident in it, but um, I'm, I'm going with the with what I think is the better roster, and that's the Indian, Indianapolis Colts. Next up. Atlanta Falcons at Dallas Cowboys, and I'm really torn on this. And, and there's a couple games that are this way where something happens in week one, and I can't tell if it's because, you know, this team is actually really good or maybe it's just that this team is, is just that bad. Um, but in both cases, if you look at it, Dallas Cowboys losing to the L.A. Rams, you know, are the Rams kind of coming back or are the Cowboys still just kind of garbage? Um, if you look at the Falcons, they got – 25 points against Seattle, which isn't bad, but they got thrashed 38 to 25 by Seattle. You know, is it just that Seattle's a lot of people think Atlanta's coming back, which I said, I don't really see why it would be the case. It's been the same group for a while that can't seem to figure this out. And you got two similar teams. You got two teams that 
seem to have good rosters but can't put production on the field. And at least to Dallas's credit, they're trying to do something about it. They're bringing in lots of talent. They fired their coach, brought in a new coach, hoping to try to revitalize this thing. So far, it's not going well. But if you look at this, um, on one side, you look at Dallas going up against these corners in Atlanta. Um, Oliver, Denard, and Terrell trying to stop Cooper, Lamb, and Gallup. Although Lamb, you know, his stats weren't terrible, but he graded out horribly. I think that this group is going to absolutely abuse these guys. Um, the offensive line didn't have a super great outing in week one, but I don't know who exactly is going to come after him. Takaris McKinley had a pretty good start to the season, but he's never really been that good of a pass rusher. Obviously, Grady Jarrett is pretty talented, but overall, this offensive line should be able to hold up. Ezekiel Elliott should be able to run pretty wild. Obviously, Deion Jones is a really good football player, also in contention for best linebacker in football, so that's going to help them. But overall, is the Falcons' defense going to be able to stop the Dallas Cowboys' offense when Seattle just hung 38 points on them, I, I don't really see that that's the case. Not that Dallas is going to be able to put up anywhere near 38 points, but if you're if you're asking who wins, Dallas offense or Falcons defense, I think you have to give advantage to Dallas offense. But again, I don't know. They should win, but will they win? Why did the offensive line play so poorly? Why did the wide receivers not play all that well? Um, I don't really know the answer. And then if you flip it over, you got the Falcons against Dallas, and that's kind of the same thing. Everson Griffin did nothing for this team. Um, even Lawrence didn't look all that impressive. The corners aren't that good in Dallas either, and they got to somehow figure out how to stop Ridley and Jones. Awuzie is not that bad, but he's not going to stop Ridley. Um, the linebackers suddenly don't know how to play football, so I don't know how they're going to stop Gurley. Gurley didn't get off to a great start, but... You know, they got a decent enough offensive line. There's no reason to believe that he's not going to get rolling. So on both sides of the ball, I think the offense is more impressive than the defense. And, and we saw the Falcons actually put up production against Dallas. So I'm, I'm really just hung on that because I'm, I'm picturing Atlanta put up 25 points against Seattle. They're going up against Dallas. Is Dallas going to do a better job or a worse job than, than Seattle did? I tend to think they're going to hang up quite a bit of points on Dallas. And I, as much as I want to pick Dallas, and I'm really just like this, Dallas's offense is going to steamroll the Falcons. It's going to be a joke. It's going to be a disaster. It just feels like, I mean, and maybe it's just because it's Mike McCarthy and I'm picturing old school Packers, or not old school, but you know, most, most recently McCarthy Packers, where you should win the game, but you're just getting steamrolled your defense is not putting up any production and you're trying to get something going on offense and it's just not quite clicking I, I want to say the words I just can't do it I want to pick Dallas so badly but I just think the Falcons offense is really going to embarrass Dallas I think they're going to get frustrated and it seems like a team that's really trying to find its identity it's really trying to come out and win and it's just not able to win games that it should win and if you look at the the game that they they lost to the Rams it wasn't a shootout it wasn't like Dallas's offense steamrolled the L.A. defense, which I don't think is all that impressive, but L.A. just kind of stayed a couple steps ahead and won. No, it was 17-20. to 20. You put up 17 points. <sighs> do, I, do I even dare? Dallas right now, 74-26. to 26. I, 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 my, my pick was Dallas when I started this, and I just, I, I'm talking myself out of it as we do this. I got, I got to pause this and just really contemplate for a moment. I tell you what, I'm going to let the injury report sway me here. Uh, Dallas doesn't have anybody injured. You got Julio Jones was limited participation. You got Jake Matthews didn't participate in practice. I'm going to pick Dallas, but it's, it's close in my mind. And I, this, this seems like a pivotal game in which Dallas is expected to win that I think they could flop. And I think it'll give a lot of credence to Atlanta, but I think if they lose, it's going to be because Dallas just can't stop shooting themselves in the foot and can't just kind of get over that hump. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm very tempted to pick Atlanta, and I may switch it, but I'm going to go with Dallas for now for my official Thursday pick. So next up, we've got the Buffalo Bills at the Miami Dolphins. This one is about as clean cut as it gets, which is a good sign for Miami because all my clean cuts went the opposite way. But um, I talked a big game last week about the Buffalo Bills, and I just I'm not a big believer in them and their quarterback and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then they went on to basically just throttle the Jets because the Jets are trash. And lucky for you, you get uh, the, the probably the worst team in football week one and maybe the second worst team in football week two. Um, I might be slightly exaggerating that, but Miami's not good. And all this talk about how good Miami's going to be and all that nonsense and everything, it's just, it's its silliness. You don't have a good quarterback. You don't have a good running back. You have a terrible offensive line. You don't have any tight ends. You got one good wide receiver. Um, you got no pass rushers. You've got 
bad corners, including, yes, Byron Jones, who got paid because he had a couple good games with D Dallas and got massively overpaid, and then he comes out and he's not very good week one against the Patriots, who don't have any wide receivers. you got no linebackers. You don't have hardly any safeties, except maybe one mediocre. This is a terrible roster. I don't know what everyone's for. Oh, because you went and got Van Noy. Ooh, Super Bowl contenders, watch out. Look, Buffalo just rocks your world 24 times out of 24. I don't know why 24. It just it doesn't matter. You can pick any number. 99 times out of 99. Maybe maybe 99 out of 100. Um, I'm not a believer in Josh Allen. I'm not. I don't think I ever will be. I don't think you guys have a really good uh, um, running back. The offensive line definitely needs some work. But, um, I mean, I don't know who's going to stop Stephon Diggs. I don't exactly know who's going to stop John Brown, for that matter. I don't know who's going to stop Dawson Knox. I don't know who's going to stop your running back. Although, Manny Wilkins, or excuse me, Manny Wilkins, Packers, ex fourth string quarterback Christian Wilkins and um you know you got Van Noy and whatever maybe can kind of kind of maybe sort of slightly a little bit do something but probably not um but then defensively just a dominant defensive line going up against a terrible offensive line you got one good wide receiver from Miami going up against one of the best corners in the football you got Poyer you got Hyde you got <sighs> Buffalo wins easily handily no question in my mind Another really easy game that I don't need to spend a lot of time on, the San Francisco 49ers going up against the New York Jets. As I said, I think the Jets are one of the worst teams in football. I'm excited for the Jets um, and their opportunity to change their franchise next year when they dump their head coach and they get rid of Le'Veon Bell and free up that money and uh, get Trevor Lawrence because you're going to get the number one overall pick because you're that garbage. And you've already got um, a starting left tackle that we really like, and you got a couple pieces in place. But uh, we're going to have a new quarterback we're going to have you know a guy maybe be enemy or something which i think would be a good fit um you know with, with what they do with mahomes and everything else and, and we'll start building in that direction but it starts with the number one overall pick which you will get because you're not good san francisco if this was a different matchup it would be worth analyzing a little bit more in terms of is there a decline with garoppolo and this this team and you know i'd look at it, the injuries and everything else but the jets are a mess they're pathetic the san francisco 49ers are arguably the best team in the nfc Again, even if there is a big decline, they're still 10 steps ahead of the New York Jets. So I'm taking the 49ers 10 times out of 10. Next up, we've got the Chicago Bears and the New York Giants. And I know everyone's going to say I'm being biased again um, because they should say this is Chicago. It's easy. It's it's not a hard decision. You're just you're being stupid about it. Look, Chicago basically lost to Detroit when Detroit didn't have their starting right tackle going up against Khalil Mack. They didn't have their number one wide receiver, who is basically 58% of their entire offense. They don't have a run game. They, they, they have no defense. Their corners were hurt. And the Bears basically lost. The only reason they won is because their running back dropped a wide-open pass that hit him right in the hands, and it just fell right out of his hands. If he doesn't do that, Bears lose. So I've been saying for a while, this is the Bears' best opportunity to go up one game in the division because the Lions are clearly better than the Bears. Um... Lions at full strength throttle the Bears. It's not even close. So now we come over to the Giants and you say, okay, but the Giants are really, really bad. All right, fair. But again, let's start with the defense. The Bears' offensive line continues to get worse and worse and worse, and it was no good last week up against the Detroit Lions, who don't really have that good of an offensive line. Leno, Daniels, Whitehair, Effetti. Daniels and Whitehair started off seemingly kind of hot early on in their career, but they've done nothing since. Trubisky, despite the last couple drives having some good whatever, still looked terrible in that game. Um... Montgomery, I guess, was somewhat promising, but again, the Detroit Lions have no ability to stop the run. The New York Giants have Martinez, who is currently ranked fourth in the NFL at linebacker. You got Lawrence, you got Tomlinson, you got Carter, who, if again, maybe it was a fluky week one thing, but the Pittsburgh Steelers' offensive line is much better than the Chicago Bears' offensive line. Um, and then Miller and Robinson, again, going up against corners that, um, you know, Okuda was out, and it just, it, it, it was a devastating situation where Robinson is a good wide receiver Miller probably did improve but I don't expect him to stay as the second best wide receiver in football that's not going to happen um, so there's going to be a regression there and then when you flip it around the other thing that's got to make you nervous uh, Saquon Barkley couldn't get going against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense the Chicago Bears defense is not the Pittsburgh Steelers defense it's not not even close as much as Bears fans want to say that it is, Khalil Mack is still Khalil Mack. Danny Trevathan and Roquan Smith are massively overrated, always have been. Um, 
Akeem Hicks is solid. And um, I'm going to forget the guy's name. The other pass rusher. Let me see if I resort this, if it'll if it'll work in my favor. Get out of nickel, go into base. Nope, it doesn't. Is he hurt? I don't know. Let me pause it. I'm so tired of that. Robert Quinn is the man's name. He is a good football player. But if you look at the Bears injury report, Robert Quinn and Khalil Mack are the two injuries. Um, supposedly, they're going to be playing. But... Um, they're, they're just questionable at this point in time. So, so they've got a couple good pass rushers. Um, but again, the Giants have a decent offensive line. They've got Saquon Barkley, who's going to be able to run the ball much better than the Lions did. Um, they have probably about as good a weapons as the Lions do when you take Kenny Galladay out of the equation. And the fact of the matter is, despite playing a really top-tier offense, you want to look for a quarterback that took a step. In 2019, his rookie year, Daniel Jones was 65.9. In 2020, 82.1, currently listed as the ninth best quarterback in football. Now, do I think that means he's going to be the ninth best player in football? No, I don't. I, I'm not saying that. But what we're looking at overall in the grand scheme of things is a much improved quarterback in Daniel Jones. We're looking at um, a guy that has some weapons, a guy that has an improved offensive line, a guy that has maybe the best running back in all of football. Um, I mean, this, this is by far not a toss-up by any stretch and I completely understand I mean off the top of my head I'm like Bears are going to kill the Giants because I came into the season saying the Giants are terrible just like I said Washington is terrible and everything else just like I said Washington would lose to the Eagles because I thought the Eagles are better than they are um and there's clearly a path to victory if Trubisky can, t can continue what he did at the second half against Detroit if Robinson and Miller continue to be this dynamic wide receiver duo if Montgomery can continue what he did he looks like he had a really good week um, you know, Jimmy Graham, I think, finally stopped being terrible about the last 30 seconds of the game. And, of course, the Bears' defense, as much as I say they're not as good as the Steelers, it is a good defense. Khalil Mack, Hakeem Hicks, um, the guy whose name I just remembered and forgot, Fuller, who I just was trashing on, you know, not having, probably not being as good since Vic Fangio left, had a really good game. You got uh, Jalen Johnson, who was a second-round pick, coming out really good game granted again not the best wide receivers in the world but the Giants don't have the best wide receivers in the world so um there's clearly a path to victory <sighs> I'm doing it again <laughs> I'm stuck again I, I you know I gotta go out on a limb at some point I'm taking the Giants in this one um I understand why the Chicago Bears are the favorite but I think that's overstated I'm going with the Giants Next up, as we move on into our afternoon games, we have the Washington football team at the Arizona Cardinals. I saw somebody get all pissy about, why do you have to say football team? Because that's literally their team name, dummy. That's why. Anyways, um, the I'll, I'll spare the suspense a little bit. The Arizona Cardinals, I am going to pick to win, but I do have some questions. Um, kind of similar to Tampa, I think that they're a little bit overrated. The, the difference is I think there is a chance Arizona loses this game. Um, again, I, I just I don't, I don't know what's so special about Arizona. Everybody's excited about Kyler Murray. He had a pretty good outing. Terrible offensive line. I mean, at this point, you've got one good wide receiver. I don't know. I mean, Christian Kirk hasn't done anything. Larry Fitzgerald is – he may officially have his first year of just, you know, probably should have called it quits a while ago. Um, on the, on the, you know, okay. So then you got Chase Young coming at him. You've got Sweat coming at him. Um, you, who is the? Uh, let's keep switching on me. Uh, Moreau, Fabian Moreau had a fantastic day. He was he was supposed he was a highly touted guy for a while, and it just never really materialized into anything. This is year four. Maybe it was just a complete fluke, but he absolutely locked it down last week against the Eagles. I'm not saying he's going to be able to handle Hopkins, but again. I don't think this is a lock. I mean, I think most people are seeing it as the Cardinals are this top-tier team. They're going to be so good, and, the you know, Washington is just this garbage team. I don't necessarily see it that way. Um, on the flip side of things, I have no hope in Haskins, but I don't know exactly that this is an elite defense by any stretch of the imagination. They don't have um, – I mean, you got Chandler Jones, who didn't do much last week. He's – what is he? He's 30 years old. Um, you've got Devin Kennard from Detroit, who has never done anything in his life. I don't care for the linebackers. Uh, you got Baker, who's pretty solid. Is that – that is Chris Banjo. Oh, my God. I saw Banjo. Dude, I love Chris Banjo. He's not a good football player, but he played for the Packers for a while, um, was well-known for just lighting people up. The fact that he's starting is not a great sign, but 
pretty excited about that. I just I just think there's a lot of names that are a little bit overrated. Patrick Peterson, maybe in 2018, had a pretty good year. He's had one in the last like five years. Byron Murphy, we'll have to see. Year one was not good. We'll see what year two is. But um, I mean, you got Terry McLaurin. I don't know. I mean, it, I, I I'm picking the Arizona Cardinals to win. I just think there are some question marks, and, and I think against a better team, Arizona's probably going to lose. I know they just beat the 49ers. Maybe that's part of the reason some of these guys aren't grading out all that well because the 49ers are a really good team. Again, we'll have to see how that all plays out, but um, I have my doubts. Arizona's going to win, but I, I, I have some questions. Next up, we have the Kansas City Chiefs and the L.A. Chargers. Again, I, I can't really drag this one out too much. The Chargers have some potential in terms of they've got some real good pass rush. Really what this is about for the Chargers is getting Kansas City out of their game, just completely wrecking stuff, right? Get Bosa after the quarterback, um, just completely blow up the game plan and then hope that with our, you know, we've got an experienced quarterback, we've got uh, Keenan Allen, we've got a couple pieces where we can put up some points, but, I mean, it's it's Kansas City, man. It's just, I, I don't know how else to really make that more exciting. It's, it's Kansas City. <laughs> Um, next up, and, and pretty similarly, we've got the Baltimore Ravens at the Houston Texans. And I, I mentioned how I think Houston was getting um, beat up on a little bit unfairly because they were going up against Kansas City. I think they got some stuff to figure out. They got this new running back that seems to have some talent. They got to figure out how to utilize that. Um, they've got kind of three wide receivers spread out in terms of talent wise, you know, three kind of decent wide receivers as opposed to like one elite wide receiver. So we've got to kind of manage all that and figure out how all that works. And getting blown out by Kansas City is sort of unfair. Well, if Kansas City isn't the best team in football, I think Baltimore is. So this is a horrific schedule. They're going to fall to 0-2. The national news media is going to be talking about how Houston is just garbage and blah, 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 blah. No, Baltimore is going to beat Houston. It's probably going to be ugly. The most important thing, if I'm the head coach of the Houston Texans, is to just make sure that they understand not to lose their their head about it. You know, this is this is a completely ridiculously unfair start to the season for any team, um, and I, I really think there's potential that they end up in the playoffs uh, this year because I, I just I don't think they're quite that. But they got a bunch of holes. I don't think they're a Super Bowl team, but um, I think it's just wildly unfair to judge a team that's still trying to navigate without any real practice their new situation and teams like that are, are going to have a harder time baltimore's just doing what they did last year kansas city's just doing what they did last year i don't know who they're playing next week but hopefully by week three they get their footing they have a little bit of a better schedule and they'll have a better opportunity but for the time being i think offensively and defensively the houston defense i don't really respect outside of jj very much a couple other pieces i think reed or whatever um and i think baltimore's just going to absolutely carve that up and then the baltimore defense will probably be able to handle houston but again Hang in there. Better days are coming, but Baltimore's winning this game. It is with great pleasure now that we uh, begin talking about the New England Patriots at the Seattle Seahawks. And the reason I say that is because I have been very happy to um, look forward to the decline of the New England Patriots, which kind of started at the end of last year and I believe will continue into this year. But of course, the New England Patriots won week one against the Miami Dolphins and everyone's talking about how great Cam is and the New England Patriots are still going strong and they're elite and all this blah, blah, blah nonsense. The Miami Dolphins are putrid, nonsense, garbage football team. There, there is nothing to be proud of about winning that game. Now you have to fly across the entire country to go to Seattle. You have to go up against the Seattle Seahawks defense, which granted isn't what it used to be, but the New England Patriots ran the ball 70% of the time. That's not sustainable. That's not a thing that you can do. It's not. The the offensive line did a great job, so I think Cam's going to have a lot of time to sit in the pocket, but I think he's going to have to actually be a quarterback, and this might be the worst group of, of weapons of any team. So you got Cam Newton sit behind a great offensive line with nobody to throw to, and he's going to have to go up against Dunbar and Griffin and Adams and throw the ball, and if he chooses not to, he's got Wagner and Adams that are just headhunting, and we've got, you know, arguably the best one of the best linebackers in football in Wagner and arguably the best safety in all of football in Adams. Just begging. Just please just run. Just run, Cam. I want you to because I'm just going to bust your spleen, which doesn't sound very nice, but that's what's going to happen. You're going to run the ball 70% of the time. You're going to get annihilated. So, you know, the, the, there's, there's two possible things here. Number one, this is sort of the gadgety nonsense that the Patriots plan on doing all the time and it's just not going to work. 
or as somebody else pointed out, maybe this is just Bill Belichick being a very good head coach who just utilizes different scenarios for different opponents, right? So that worked against Miami. Now we're going to come up with a new game plan. The problem is you have to be able to actually execute that game plan. And if you're not going to be able to haul off and run, and, and, and the other issue is Miami scored 11 points. So you can play the run game all day long when the other team can't score points. That's great. Seattle's going to score a lot of points. So you're going to have to, again, sit back and throw and throw to who? Nikhil Harry? Asi Asi? Izzo? Uh, Demir Bird? I don't even know who that is. So Seattle, I think, is going to win this one. And I think we're all this talk, because it's you know, the hype train that they won, and we, we got to get our talking points in and all this nonsense. Cool. That's all going to stop after this week. And I've, if New England wins, I'm going to have to change my tune a little bit. Not that this is the greatest defense in the world, but should absolutely be able to handle this. You got Dunbar and Griffin that have to stop Harry and Bird. Um, you got Wagner, you got Adams to stop Cam Newton. There's no excuse. Zero excuse. Uh, I don't care that your defensive line is garbage. I don't care about any of that. You need to beat the Patriots or I will be very disappointed in you. I mean, I should be happy. The New England Patriots mean nothing to me. I want I actually want them to beat Seattle, but I'm just tired of hearing about the Patriots. They're not a good team. They're not going to win this week. Seattle's going to win. If they don't, then fine. Great. Go Packers. I don't care. And finally, we have Saints Raiders. This is uh, New Orleans Saints at the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, I'm actually a little bit excited to see this game. I'm, I'm picking the Saints to win, not surprisingly, but there's a lot of talk about Drew Brees declining, right? His Some of those balls are just kind of hanging out there. Okay, that's one thing. He lost his number one wide receiver, so he's going to have to look to Emmanuel Sanders and some of these other guys. All right, that's interesting. Um, the offensive line didn't hold up all that well. That's interesting. I think Cleland Furl and some of these guys up front actually had a pretty good start to the season, which is interesting. Um, I think they've got some, some talented young players in Las Vegas now whether or not they're actually that talented, I don't know. But Jonathan Abram at safety. You got Trayvon Mullen going into his second year. You've got Damon Arnett, who is a rookie, who they picked at pick 19. So there's a lot of young talent going up against a seemingly declining New Orleans Saints, who doesn't have their number one weapon. Um, and then on the flip side, you have a very good offensive line that the Raiders have. You have Josh Jacobs, arguably one of the best running backs in football. No question this is going to be a much better rushing attack than they saw in week one. You got Waller, who's one of the better tight ends. You got Henry Ruggs, who's going into his second uh, game. You got uh, Brian Edwards, who's a third round pick going into his second game. So there's a lot of talent here. Um, I still think the Saints come out on top because their corners are really, really talented. I think they have the advantage. You've got uh, Cam Jordan, who's obviously a freakish pass rusher. Um, I don't really know the status of, um, where is he? He's Marcus Davenport's questionable. There's no note there. Uh, Michael Thomas is expected to miss several weeks. Cesar Ruiz, PJ Williams, also questionable. Um, I Look. The Raiders had a hard time handling the Carolina Panthers. I think they have a lot of question marks. They have a lot of issues. But I'm just saying, there's there's more than enough talent here to put together some impressive drives and to put up some points against the Saints. I don't know necessarily how their defense completely stops everything, but the path to victory, I guess, is you get Waller and you get Ruggs and you get Jacobs involved and you just kind of continue to push the ball down and you score those points. And then on the flip side, it kind of depends on – the Saints not looking all that hot on offense, which is the, the the part where I get hung up and why I think the Saints are going to win, because I don't think that's going to happen. they got a good offensive line. Breeze is still a good quarterback. Obviously, you got Taysom Hill, who's a wild card. Sanders is a, a wide receiver I really like. And I don't think Mullen and Arnett are, are all that great. And, and, you know, the defensive line, even if F F Cleveland Furl takes a step, is not that great. Kwiatkowski had a good week last week. He has a torn pectoral muscle. Um... I, I, I'm a fan of the Raiders. I, I like what they're doing. I like how they're building. I like how guys are kind of shaping out. Um, I just think it's a little too much of an ask. Even with the, the even if the Saints are declining and being beat up, I still take the Saints by a little bit. Maybe not quite as as, as much as a lot of people are, but um, I just I don't really see a very clear path for the Raiders outside of what I outlined. But it's one of those, you know, nine times out of ten the Saints take it.
so that's it. That's all I got for week two. Um, a lot of toss-ups this week. It's going to be kind of tough. A lot of questions to be answered. But I hope you appreciated the video. Please give it a like if you liked it. Please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything. I've got a mock draft coming out. I'm really hoping by Saturday. I would like to get it out today because Thursday is going to kind of mess everything up with draft order and whatnot. But that's fine. It, it is what it is. Um, they're both going to be high picks anyways. But uh, please check that out. Tons of content coming out. And uh, you folks have a good day.